Hey guys, this is Tyler Disney, a BIM guy over at Integral Group Oakland, and this video is all about wrangling air terminal schedules. But it's about a little bit more than that because this is really about the magic of the itemize every instance checkbox and sorting grouping tab in schedules and how that's extremely powerful for way more than just air terminals. Um, it really helps you kind of get into more Revit Ninja status when you grasp this stuff. So I recommend uh, watching this and absorbing uh, kind of what we're talking about here. So here's the situation. Uh, we've got three air terminals, uh, supply return exhaust, uh, and these are the air terminal tags. This reads uh, A is the tight mark, this is the size, the connector size, so 8 inch round, and this is the CFM, 150 CFM airflow. Then here we go with our air terminal schedule. Uh, depending on your company standards, on your project specifics, it's going to look different, be arranged with information that displays a little bit differently. Uh, so I try to make this simple so that we can understand the concepts without getting bogged down in the details. But um, your air terminal schedule might look something like this, except for column B, which is listing the family and type, just to help us keep track of things. And so when you are working with air terminals and air terminal schedules, what I recommend you do is you have two schedules open. You have this one, which is the one you ostensibly would put on your schedule sheet, and then another one that'll be your working uh, schedule. So duplicate this guy and call it working air terminal schedule. And so the difference between these two guys is for the working air terminal schedule, you are going to set itemize every instance to be checked. And on this guy, the itemize every instance is going to be unchecked. That's going to be the only difference. Sort that out. All right, so let's just start digging into uh, how this stuff works. So I'm going to grab my supply family, meet my family, uh, M ceiling square face round neck supply, and here's its type, 24 by 24, 8, uh, 8 round. And then I've got all these different types, which represent a couple of different face sizes and a number of different connector sizes. Uh, so what happens if I copy this guy down a few times? make a few different instances. Well, first of all, to this one, nothing happens because, again, I've got itemize every instance unchecked. And so what that means is that every instance of a family that shares the same type mark, because that's what I have sorting set to, will be collapsed into one row. So every air terminal in the family, uh, sorry, every air terminal in the project that has type mark set to A will be represented in this one single row. And then in this schedule, obviously, it itemized every instance because that's what I told it to do. So that's behaving nicely. But now what happens if I click on this guy and I say 8-inch round? I don't want 8-inch round. I want 12-inch round. Well, what happened is it created this. Oh, in fact, I'm going to do that to, to two of them. So two of these guys are what I say, 12 inch? Yeah. So it created this row up here, which, which is type mark is blank. And you can see what it's doing is it's representing these two families, these two air terminals that don't have a type mark uh, here as, as blank. And so uh, now we get into the area where it depends on what your company standard is. So the only difference between these guys is the connector size. Now often what we'll do is we'll say these are the same type. So we'll say, yeah, these are all A's, um, but it's just that the connector size is a little different. So what you can do is you can come in here and just say, okay, actually I want, I want those to be A's. And then now they'll get collapsed back into this row. But you notice family and type went blank and connector size went blank. And that's because Revit is collapsing into this row multiple families which have different values for these parameters, family type and connector size. 
And so when there's when there's families with different types or with different values uh, that are being collapsed, it just goes blank. And so that doesn't mean that there's no information in here whatsoever. It means that you know it's blank. And so that's actually really powerful uh, because this allows us to massively edit the values of parameters if we want to. Now, connector size and family and type, these are kind of hard-coded uh, values that we can't change with, uh, that we can't change the values of. But like I said, in this instance, what we might want to do for connector size is say something like C drawings for connector size. And I want that to apply to all of the term air terminals that I have. So I can't use this parameter, so I'm going to find another parameter. And I like to use the parameter type comment. Uh, type comment and call it connect size at the center. And the size parameter I'm actually going to set to hitting, because I don't want to use that in this. In some instances, in some air terminal schedules, I will use that. But in this one, I won't. So this is take two of this uh, tutorial, or three or four. So um, pretend you didn't see that. Pretend these are blank. Um, and I'm going to go into my working schedule, and I'm going to add the type comments field as well. I'm going to leave size and type comments, though. OK, so, so I've got my row here, A. And again, A represents these four instances in these now two types. And I say connector size, C drawings. And now what that just did, if you'll notice, is it, I typed it in here once, but since this cell right here represents the information for, for four different instances uh, and for two different types. It set that for all these guys. So you can start to see the implications, not just for air terminals, but for anything you're trying to do. If you've got some, if you've you know got hundreds and hundreds of different instances of any kind of family of any kind of category, and not even of the same family, it could be totally different families. You can use sorting and grouping with unchecking itemize every instance and then sorting by some parameter that groups all of the families that you want grouped into one and then uh, just enter in the value that you want for that parameter and it'll set it to all of those hundreds of different families. So that's a really powerful way of doing uh, massive uh, information editing to families in Revit. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to make a copy, a couple more copies of my supply air terminal, and I'm going to switch these to uh, 12 by 12 supply. And so these guys, I actually want to have, I'm going to, I want these guys to be a different type. I want them to be A, B, C, D. And so you'll notice what happened again here is it created a blank row, um, which I don't want, don't want any blanks in my air terminal schedule. So I'm going to go over here to my air terminal schedule. And make sure I'm selecting the right one. Yep, that's 12 by 12, 6 inch. I'm going to say, OK, your type mark is now D. And I'll apply that to all of them. And it shows up nicely in here. And I can tell this to uh, edit this size to be correct, 12 by 12, C drawings. And that's what I want. So that's basically it. Once you uh, set up your two schedules to uh, itemize every instance and not itemize every instance, uh, and then just uh, you know use the right parameters and get it set up the way your company wants your air terminal schedule to look. It's pretty uh, pretty swift, pretty quick, and it's a great way of keeping track of what air terminals you have in your family, and not listing air terminals that you don't have in your family. So. That's it. Cheers. Hit me up with any questions if you have any. Thanks.